I feel so nasally right now. I don't know why. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to Pokemon Sub S Sword and Shield. Really? What is up, everyone? And welcome back to Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. We're in the end game now, right outside of the Victory Road. But before we get started, there's actually a couple of things that I did in between episodes. So let's quickly go over those as we head off to Saffron City where I actually just wanted to heal my Pokemon, but I noticed in the Pokemon Center, there's this nice Ace Trainer over here who's very into Raichu. And of course, a couple of episodes ago, we did get ourselves a Raichu, so we're gonna get that Alolan trade going and get ourselves an amazing, pancake-loving, surge-surfing Raichu of Alola. I love this Pokemon. Of course, I used it in my Sun and Moon playthrough, and now we get one in this game because... I don't know, I want to do all the Alolan trades. And there's another one we'll do in just a little bit, but here in Saffron City, there's a couple of more things I wanted to check out uh, to the north of the city by the Fighting Dojo. Or is this the real gym? I can't tell the difference, but there's a nice Officer Jenny who uh, Petrie the Aerodactyl is totally covering up. But if we talk to her after rescuing Saffron from Team Rocket, she will actually give us the police uniform. But there's one more thing here in Saffron that I'm not sure if I actually showed off, uh, but I do remember talking to this girl on the second floor of this house over here, and she is actually known as the Copycat. And you can notice a whole bunch of Clefairy dolls in her room, and if we actually have one in our party, you can get yourself a nice TM for Substitute. And that is actually the final TM I think we have, aside from the ones in the Celadon department store in the entire overworld. So, with all of that in hand, we are ready to take on the Victory Road. But there's one more thing I wanted to do real quick. On Cinnabar Island, there's another Alolan trade, and you can get yourself Meowth if you're playing Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. Uh, but if you're playing Let's Go Pikachu, I think this will actually be the trade for... Alolan Grimer, I believe, uh, which of course we already have one of those from Pokemon Go, so we're good to go now inside of the Victory Road, but actually I do want to change into our newly acquired outfit just to check it out for this episode. Uh, let's go to Orange, and we've got the police top there. Oh, this is going to take a minute to put everything on, huh? <laughs> totally worth it, though. Officer Orange on duty. And now let's check out the accessories for Darwin, as we actually have quite a lot of stuff. Uh, I've had those glasses on Darwin for a while, and I said I was going to switch it up. So let's do that finally. And uh, we could actually go get ourselves some other glasses later on at the department store. So maybe after the Pokemon League or Victory Road, that is. But there we go. We're nice. And matching now, Orange and Darwin ready for adventure inside the Victory Road. And actually, we already came in here last episode. Uh, we explored a little bit of it. Not this area, though. But if we head up all the way around, um, there was actually a very important choice for some items. And I guess we made the right choice because we got the TM for Stealth Rock. Actually, the first of a lot of TMs that we can find here in the Victory Road. Uh, but this time, we're actually going to use our strong pushing powers and BAM! Hit that one right up. I love the way that Eevee punches the rock. Like, it looks so much better than the strength animation in previous generations. But behind door number two, a Leaf Stone. Not sure why we're getting that now. I guess there was Execute in the route right outside, so you could use that to evolve into Executor. Uh, but you can also find Executor in the wild, so not really worth it. And this trainer over here, I actually took on last episode, but didn't really get to show it off, so I guess we can do that now. We do seem to have a Super Saiyan Eevee on our heads, so really it feels like anything is possible right now, as Ace Trainer Naomi is out here. And I'm actually thinking maybe we shouldn't have taken on the Pokemon League just yet. Don't know if we're quite prepared to take on all the trainers in here. I mean, I guess levels-wise, we're okay. Petrie's at 48 right now. This Kangaskhan is 47. But as far as damage goes, yeah, we're not really doing too much. Maybe it's just Petrie that's not ready for this Pokemon League challenge, so I'm definitely going to have to do a little bit of boot camping to our uh, Aerodactyl before we take on that final challenge. But Dasani comes in finishes it off for him. Yeah, I'm just kind of sad that Petrie hasn't been doing too hot lately. Uh, but Venusaur is going to be up next, and actually, this gives us another chance to bring out you-know-who. 
I love Charizard X so much, but in this situation, I guess Y is better, so we'll go for it. And I definitely gotta remember to check out all of our TMs and stuff too and update them because we do have Earthquake now, and I think there's a couple of more that we bought. Definitely gotta teach our Pokemon those, as apparently this girl thought she was good at battling, but not today. Continuing on though with uh, Golbat staring at our face there kind of spooked me, but uh, I think we actually also have one of those, so I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> that dude somehow didn't see us. I'm very surprised. I guess this is the powers of being an officer. You're above the law, above all the trainers' eyesight now. And I'm not sure what he said, but Ace Trainer Rolando? I was about to say Ronaldo, but I think that's uh, in a different universe. Definitely not a professional Pokemon trainer, more of a professional something else. Anyway, Rapidash is Rolando's choice here. Quite a quick Pokemon, but not quick enough to escape the rocking from Aerodactyl, even though it actually didn't take it out, which kind of sucks. Petrie definitely needs a little bit of a power-up. Uh, we could use some candies, but I don't really want to do that. I feel like it's a little cheap. I mean, they're in the game, so it's not really cheating or anything, but it does feel like cheap, you know? Like, it's not as rewarding as actually training up your Pokemon, I guess. But you could say that about a lot of things, like uh, actually training Pokemon for competitive battling and stuff. I was always on the fence about that because even though I did really enjoy in uh, Pokemon X and Y especially, EV training my Pokemon myself and breeding for the perfect natures and all that, it is a very, very tedious process. It takes a long time, which I guess is supposed to give you the experience of what it's like to be a real Pokemon trainer, but uh, at the same time, I would much rather hop on like Pokemon Showdown or something and, you know, just put in the numbers for whatever stats you want on your Pokemon. At least as far as uh, battle simulation goes, or well, I guess practice battles, you know? When it comes down to the real tournament, I do feel like people should use their legit Pokemon they've bred and everything, but um, if you want to practice, I mean, I feel like there's never been anything wrong with using programs like that. I don't even know if that's a thing anymore, like, let's go really slow down the competitive scene because it has only Kanto Pokemon. I mean, I'm not really that smart at competitive battling, but I feel like that's probably the main reason why. Uh, not having all, you know, 900 Pokemon available. It's a little bit of a letdown, but, I mean, it is just for this one year, I guess, until Sword and Shield come out, and then hopefully the competitive meta will be all shooken up, and people will start playing it again. As uh, Darwin feels the tension in the air. Oh, it's our last challenge. Come on, dude. We got this. Let me actually try to pet your chin a little bit. Oh, I know you like that. So cute in that uh, police outfit. I don't really like the police too much myself. Surprise, surprise. I mean, who really does? But the outfit does look pretty cool. And, you know, I do actually like Officer Jenny. There's nothing wrong with her. This ain't the real life police. But we push the boulder into the switch. And now we can uh, proceed that way, I guess. There's going to be a lot of this going on in the Victory Road, and I just hope that I can find all of those TMs because, as I mentioned, there's like five of them here. And Are you kidding me? These dudes really won't let us through. Uh, I want to use a Repel, but I feel like there's a Pokemon here that we haven't caught yet. I'm actually not 100% sure, but there might be a couple that we haven't seen or caught. Uh, mostly Rhydon is the one I'm looking for, and we did already see Rhyhorn, so... I'm not actually sure if you can find right on in here or not. I would just assume that this is the only area we can. But we got Hypno in front of us right now. And thankfully, Petrie does have that crunch. Yo, I just realized we could totally have Mega Aerodactyl too. But we only got the keystones for um, the Kanto starter Pokemon. So I'm not sure if it's post game. Probably once we beat the Pokemon League, we can get the keystones for all the other ones. Uh, or maybe actually in the Pokemon League itself. I think you can actually buy them, similar to the Battle Tree in Sun and Moon. Except you don't actually have to gather up battle points. Which actually brings back the topic of competitive battling, because Sun and Moon did have the Battle Tree, but honestly, even that didn't feel like it was that fun to do. Like, in X and Y, like I said, for some reason I actually really enjoyed uh, breeding, and I don't know why I left Petrie in against Slowbro here. Not my best move, but uh, I do believe we have some revives, so at least we can, you know, keep bringing him back from the dead. Poor Petrie must be getting PTSD from being revived as a fossil. It just keeps happening over and over. He just keeps getting taken down and revived. Oh, man. 
I feel kind of bad when you think about it like that. But yeah, in Sun and Moon, I don't know why I didn't feel as, I guess, incentivized, if that's a word. Like, I didn't feel that drive to really want to train all of my Pokemon. And I still actually did a lot of breeding and training in Sun and Moon, especially because of the super training or no, that was X and Y also. There was something else in Sun and Moon that made EV training really easy. I think it was the Poke Pelago or something like that that made it actually fun. And I didn't mind it at all, but the battle tree itself, uh, just aside from those really special battles you could have every once in a while with, uh, you know, previous trainers from other regions, it just wasn't super satisfying, I guess. And I was really hoping Ultra Sun and Moon would actually have a deeper post game than that, maybe some more of a challenge, but from what I heard, it's actually just pretty much the same thing. And of course, the uh, Rainbow Rocket episode, which is actually super awesome and I still want to play through. Uh, so once I'm done with this playthrough here, which I don't really want to predict how many episodes it's going to take, I have no idea, but, um, you know, I like having just one main playthrough at a time. And even though I'm going to upload some other types of videos, like I actually have another Temtem episode in the works finally for tomorrow, hopefully. Yeah, I do like to stick to mainly one game at a time, so for now, until we finish Let's Go, I'll just, you know, keep doing this, or I guess delay the Alpha episode, or what am I even talking about? The Rainbow Rocket episode, dude. Oh man, too many DLC post-game shenanigans going on in the last few Pokemon games. Like, I actually want to ask you guys that question. Which do you prefer, the more story-heavy post-game, like the Delta episode in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, or the more traditional post-game, where you just have more areas to explore in the game and new Pokemon and... By the way, here is the TM for Solar Beam, so that's the second one on the list. I think there's like three more that we can find here, but uh, as long as we avoid these Gravelers, should be all good. Um, it looks like there's another wall we can take down there too, but the Switch... I mean, there's no like rock to put on the Switch, so I guess we'll just keep on going through. Is Victory Road too tough? I mean, I guess we'll find out. Hasn't been too terribly bad so far. As I remember that Petrie actually went down in the last battle, so probably should have brought him back against this Mr. Mime. Um, I guess it is half fairy type though, so the crunch wouldn't have been super effective. I always forget that about Mr. Mime these days, man, but we totally could have gone for the power up there on Darwin. Uh, I guess we have the prompt to shake the Joy-Con right now, but do we really need it? I don't think so. I'm going to save it for a tougher battle. I think there's going to be some coach slash ace trainers to take on in a little bit here. And I don't really know why I went for Thunderbolt, but I hope it takes it down. Yes, even with the reflect, uh, which I kind of forgot if it raises defense or special defense, but I'm pretty sure it's defense. Which begs the question, why did Mr. Mime throw it up knowing that I have only special moves? Or I guess he didn't know, he thought I was a physical attacking Starmie for some reason. But Alakazam is coming out next, and them spoons trying to dig at our uh, muck right now. I know it looks like ice cream, but trust me, that ain't Napolitan. That's pure sludge right there, just toxic goo. Which I guess is kind of ice cream too, if you eat too much of it. At least it'll make your stomach feel like that. Or maybe not actually, stomach or er, ice cream isn't really that bad. I've been getting it really bad from pizza lately, man. Like, I really gotta start eating better. That juggler's face perfectly describes how I feel about when I eat pizza. <laughs> anyway, we got a TM for superpower over here. Another one crossed off the list. And I think there's actually just one more left, maybe two. But over here, there is a full restore. Could totally use that on Petrie. <laughs> If he wasn't fainted, that is, because we got to use a revive first. But this dude apparently wants to whip us. I don't know what that means, but I feel like you shouldn't just be walking around with a lollipop in your hand, especially <laughs> saying that to children. Like, I know it's not a lollipop, but come on, it's pretty funny. <laughs> anyway, this dude's got Primate. Uh, let's go for the Psychic and hopefully get that anger right out of your system. Look at the way that nose is twitching. Like, what the heck, Primate? Reminds me of Spoink, which I think if it ever stops bouncing, it will literally die. <laughs> or I think that's one of its Pokedex descriptions, says that uh, Spoink keeps its heart going by bouncing, and if it ever stops bouncing, it might actually die. So it is that dark of a Pokedex description, as we miss the Hydro Pump, unfortunately. But I know we'll hit it the second time around. Come on, Dasani. Oh, come Really? 
Okay, well, I guess I should have used Recover, but uh, that's going to be another one of our team members going down there. I really got to start using my healing moves. Like, I have Recover and Roost on Petrie too, and I never use them for some reason, but here we go, Darwin. Give him the double edge. Show him what a real thrashing looks like as it's actually not going to take it out, but hopefully the recoil does. Oh boy, that hurt. I guess he doesn't actually hurt himself with recoil because he got confused this turn instead. I don't know, but Sappy Seed, you know what it do. Finish it off. That actually went really slow. Like the HP on Tauros was dropping way too slow for comfort. And I thought he might not go down, but I think there's actually another way to heal coming up soon. Hopefully up this ladder here. I mean, I don't really know how far it is, but whoa, that's a lot of Pokemon. And I think it's actually around this corner. So we got pretty lucky here as Officer Jenny, our clone is waiting. Are you on your way to the league? Well, I'm in the middle of my patrol, but I bet a bit of encouragement from a beautiful police officer will help you. Yes, that's right. Could use a couple of Officer Jennies in the real world, you know. Oh gosh, there's Rhydon actually. So my prediction, or I guess guess from earlier came true. And that Rhydon is here in the Victory Road. So let's go for a nice little raspberry there. And if you'll stop jumping around. Oh, caught him mid-air there. Give him the freeze frame real quick. And hopefully we can catch this dude. Nice. First try. I'm actually pretty surprised. But uh, yeah, we didn't get the excellent capture or anything. So it's not going to be crazy experience. But what matters is we've got Rhydon registered in the decks. The Drill Pokemon, ground and rock type, its brain developed when it began walking on its hind legs, its armor-like hide even repels molten lava. So basically they're saying Rhyhorns are freaking dumb, <laughs> like they literally, or their brains didn't develop until, oh, look at that tiny little Rhydon, <laughs> and also the TM for Blizzard, but as soon as we hit the A button, this thing is gonna ch 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 chia pet grow in size, I bet, yep. <laughs> Was it even Chia Pets that grew? I'm thinking of something else, like, I remember these toys when I was young, uh, which weren't really toys, you could buy them at the dollar store, and if you put them in your tub, or like a big thing of water, they would like grow overnight, and they weren't even fun, like you literally just sit there and wait, but for some reason, that was so entertaining when I was 8 years old, dude, like, if anybody else remembers those, let me know in the comments, because <laughs> I couldn't have been the only one that had a giant T-Rex sitting in my bathtub for no reason. That's enough uh, childhood stories. I mean, I guess we are kind of just punching a block right now, so uh, maybe the stories are actually getting us through this easier. As we finally get it into the slot, click, and the slab goes down. <laughs> The Geodude hasn't though, I really hope we can actually get past him, but I guess before we do, let's check out what's down this ladder. Um, but that was actually all of the TMs that we can get, I think aside from, oh my gosh, was that a freaking Moltres? There's a PP Max right here, and I'm pretty sure that is a Moltres right there, so I'm just gonna pretend we didn't see that, and uh, Darwin wanted a little shake, so let's skedaddle and... Almost run into Machoke, but not quite, because uh, there's a couple of more items to get, and Geodonix, I mean, he's literally the gatekeeper, blocked the whole path right there, but uh, down here, I guess there's another Ace Trainer and an item, and thankfully we did heal up our Pokemon, because, I mean, I do want Petrie to gain some experience, actually. He's at level 49 right now, the only one in our party to not hit 50 yet, but this dude here has got Scyther, and that is definitely something that our Aerodactyl should be able to handle. If we can't handle it, uh, then I might lose a little bit of hope in Petrie, not gonna lie, but I know you got this dude. Rock slide away, and there it is. I love seeing these two Pokemon face off, like, I don't know if it's the animation of the wings, but they're both just so animated that it looks cool, but uh, get a little bit of a level up there on Frank, and Marowak is coming out next, so what really is the story of Marowak? Like, I always get confused because of the one Marowak, you know, that Gibby's got now, I guess. That was the little Cubone, actually. The Marowak was the mom that I think got killed by Team Rocket or caught in the cross. Excuse me. I'm going to stop talking now because, well, the battle's over anyway, and I'm just confusing you guys more than I'm confusing myself at this point, so. Let's grab this item over here. 
and it's a uh, nice max revive. We could have used that earlier when uh, Petri was down, but I guess we don't need it anymore, so... Have we been in this ladder, actually? Or wait, actually, this is the way we came. Totally been there. Uh, thankfully, we didn't run into those guys either, and we've got yet another Ace Trainer. Who would have thought so many Ace Trainers here in the Victory Road, but... I mean, what else is there to be expected as we've got Alexa coming out this time around and she's actually got Dragonair. Okay, haven't seen too many of those yet, but actually we don't have anything to really take it out with, uh, at least here on Petrie. So let's just rock slide away and see how much damage we do. We do have nine tails on the team, but I want to see how much Petrie can do. So, oh no, it's another surf Petrie. I keep letting you down, buddy, but oh, actually that's going to do nothing. And our next uh, rock slide definitely will do something, so good job, Dragonair. I mean, Petrie. Uh, I'm not trying to be mean to Alexa here or anything, but Petrie did actually do a good job uh, taking it down there and tanking up the Surf as Hitmonchan is actually coming out next. And I think this is the first one we've seen since we actually picked Hitmonlee over at the Fighting Dojo all that time ago. Swiftly avoiding the Thunder Punch there by flying up into the air. And I love that fly animation. Look at that. Crashing right down into the Hitmonchan. Like, Let's Go has got to have, for sure, the best fly animation so far. And I mean, it is the first fully 3D, you know, HD game, I should say. Because we've had 3D for a little bit now. But I guess the full HD graphics really make that fly look as powerful as it's supposed to. So let's use it again on Wigglytuff here, whose name has tough in it. So hopefully it doesn't live up to that. And it's more Wiggly instead. Could you imagine that? Like, as your first and last name, Wiggly Tough. That actually would be a pretty baller name, I feel like. Like, if I ever met anyone with the name Wiggly Tough, like, legit first and last name, I would probably never mess with that person. Look at that! It just destroyed Petrie there! I should have known, though, because the fly didn't do enough damage to two-shot it, so... Might be... I don't know why I always think that swapping Pokemon will take longer than just spamming the A button when, in reality, swapping is probably way smarter and quicker, but... Anyway, we took down Alexa, so who really cares? Let's grab another Max Potion? Or another item? We haven't really grabbed the Max Potion before, I think, but... If this is the slab we brought down, then I guess we're heading the right way because... Yep, we've got two more Ace Trainers down here and, uh... Pretty sure this means we're going the right way. More trainers the later or deeper we get into the victory road. As next up, we've got Colby. And this dude's actually got four Pokemon. Oh, jeez. Starting off with Electrode, which is not great for Dasani here. Another reminder that I still haven't taught Cinder Earthquake. And this battle is probably not going to go too great. Oh, boy, the thunder coming out. That attack just looks so powerful, but it actually barely did damage, so I think we're good for now. Even though Eevee is paralyzed, so you know what? Maybe this is it. This is the moment we were saving it for this whole time. Still paralyzed, so... I guess Electrode is faster. <laughs> That's so weird, because we used our sure hit move, and I thought it would go first no matter what. But, VV Volley does not have priority, but it does have the devastation as Electrode blows up. Literally caused a nuclear explosion, I'm pretty sure. Every time you use VV Volley, whole cities are leveled and thousands are destroyed. Pokemon and people and... Jeez, this episode has been really morbid today. I don't know why, but... It's Kingler! And we're still paralyzed, so Darwin is gonna get super powered down, but somehow survive thanks to the, uh, power of love, I guess. Uh... Also going to hit the Sappy Seed. Oh my gosh, we're getting so lucky in this battle, man. I'm sorry, Darwin. I need to start paying more attention to everything, I guess. But uh, I guess the only thing we can do right now is probably go for that full restore we found earlier. I really wanted to save some of them for the actual Pokemon League. But wait, the Seed actually took it down. We're good. Never mind. Good job, Darwin. I mean, I knew you could do it all along. Yeah. And I know we haven't used Ninetales in a while. I actually thought about bringing her out for a little Blizzard action, but I guess Dasani could use the experience more at level 54, and Ninetales is almost at 60 already, so... Yeah, let's just have Dasani, you know, gain a little bit more levels. I say that, and yet Petrie's the one that could really use the levels right now, but he's totally fainted, so that really sucks, but... 
Hey, at least Asani gained the level. And Colby's final Pokemon is going to be Rhydon, the one we just caught with the power of intelligence. Can it stand up to the Hydro Pumpin? Probably not. Unless we miss, of course, which of course we did. Let's get Earthquake. Oh, man. <laughs> Another Pokemon move that causes devastation and destruction all around. Uh, just like the BB Volley is basically a nuke. Earthquake is literally an Earthquake, so... Not sure how you explain that one logically, but the Rhydon goes down, and that is it for Colby. Holy moly, this, uh, these battles are getting pretty tough, but I guess they are all ace trainers, so I shouldn't expect any less. And I really thought that girl might not see us, but I guess I expected her to be blind, because I don't know how any normal person wouldn't see you, but no idea what she was talking about. Let's take on Caroline. And I'm just really worried because I actually didn't heal my Pokemon, as I usually do. But, uh, Jinx is gonna be first up, and we definitely have a Cinder. It kinda sucks that Petrie is not alive because both of these Pokemon could have definitely gone down to a couple of rock slides, but... Here's the next best thing! Charizard going down underground, and... I hope this does enough damage. Probably not, though. Why didn't I Mega Evolve, by the way? Totally could have done that, but... Uh, Arcanine is trying to outrage right now, and this time it's actually gonna get it, but Cinder is good. And speaking of outrage, I think that's actually the one move that we're still missing here in the Victory Road. So hopefully we can take down Arcanine here and whatever her last Pokemon is so we can move on to that. Because uh, I definitely need some better moves on our Cinder, but Golbat is gonna be it. Really? I felt a bit anticlimactic as the last Pokemon, but... I mean, to each their own. If Caroline loves bats, then I can't really judge her, I guess. Anyway, I wish we could go heal up, and actually we could totally go do that uh, with Officer Jenny, but it feels a little bit far away, so let's just keep trekking on for now. And actually, we're gonna run into this boulder here. <laughs> what is up with that sound effect? That was so funny. Um, that is actually the co-trainer I was talking about, but if we push that boulder, we'll actually just end up trapping ourselves. Or not being able to progress, I mean, so... Let's just fall down this one instead. No need to be shook if Darwin. We got each other, buddy. And this boulder, too, which we're totally gonna push all the way down this hall. Because I think that's actually where the switch for this slab right here is. So let's just, uh, keep on punching, I guess. Jeez, I w If only I wasn't so bad at actually walking forward. Oh no, Machop! Oh, <gasps> I thought we were gonna crush him, but there we go. He somehow teleports out of the way and clicks right into the slot for the final slab to go down. And now we can take on that Pokemaniac, I guess, is not the last trainer, because there's definitely still that coach, but I do want to heal up with Officer Jenny, so I'm gonna go do that real quick. And here we go, the final trainer of the Victory Road. If you can get through here, you can go meet the Elite Four. Is this really the final challenge? Is it really Pokemaniac Shane Dawson with his Slowpoke onesie? Or not really onesie, but pajama sort of thing. I don't believe it. So let's take him on and his Licky Tongue and find out. Oh gosh, Licky Tongue has Power Whip? Okay, well, we're still half flying type, so it shouldn't be too bad. That animation was crazy though, like, it went all over the place with it. Oh, well, I guess we get to see it again. Just imagine that being actually Licky Tongue's tongue though, instead of those green vine looking things, but... I actually don't imagine it, because we get to see it one more time, since the rock slide barely didn't take this dude down. I'm very surprised it didn't, but whatever, let's finish it off with a crunch. I don't want to imagine Aerodactyl actually having to bite Licky Tongue. Specifically that tongue, it just, it sounds gross, and now I'm actually thinking about it, so I don't know why I brought it up, but uh, Blastoise is gonna be next for this dude, and he's actually packing quite a hefty arsenal of Pokemon here. Uh, Licky Tongue, not the toughest, but I mean, it is kind of unique. I don't think we'd ever seen a Licky Tongue up until this point, and I actually have no idea where we can catch one. Maybe it's actually here in the Victory Road, but like super rare, so... I'm thinking now we might actually have to spend a little bit more time looking around as the Hydro Pump is coming out, but Dasani can easily block that out. Come on, Blastoise, you really don't got anything better than that. You don't got a Mega Evolution you're hiding, Shane Dawson. Wouldn't it be funny if his last Pokemon was like Persian or something? 
Maybe not everyone's gonna get that joke, but those of you that do, I appreciate you. Anyway, Cinder is gonna get a level here, and his last Pokemon will actually be Onyx. Uh, I guess he's keeping it real. Real hard, that is. And we're gonna Hydro Pump. Oh, no! I totally spammed the A button too quick there. Uh, I guess now we gotta deal with another Earthquake, and the cave has just collapsed, and everyone in Victory Road is dead now, so... Good job, Pokemaniac, Dawson. Thankfully, we hit the Hydro Pump this time around, and the big ol' Onyx will go down. I've dealt with too many Onyxes this episode, man. I am done with you, Mr. Dawson. Thank you, next. Next trainer, I mean, as we go up another set of stairs or ladders, and here we are at the real final challenge. Machoke, what are you running at, dude? I'm running for this item down here, and it turns out it's one more full restore, but remember when I said there was one more rare Pokemon lurking somewhere around here? Well, it turns out it was Hitmonchan, and you can find it here on the third floor of the Victory Road. It's like a pretty low percentage though, so I'm kind of lucky that we ran into him, but there it is, the Punchin' Pokemon literally swinging at us right now as I miss quite a couple of Ultra Balls, okay. I don't know why I'm so bad at throwing, but there we go. Fifth time, or six is the charm, as we do, and Hitmonchan will be ours. Now, you can also find Hitmonlee here in the Victory Road on the second floor, I believe, so just pay attention to those ladders and keep running around. Eventually, you should be able to find one, but Hitmonchan here will be added to the decks. Punches in corkscrew fashion. It can punch its way through a concrete wall like a drill. Yeah, I think this is the exit, so this is the final trainer in Victory Road. Your Pokemon are so cute! I'm a coach, come on, battle me! Yes, indeed, it'll be a spectacle, indeed. I'm just a little thrown off by him just calling our Pokemon cute, but we got Ryan Reynolds out here as our final challenge. Detective Pikachu himself, which I can't wait for, by the way. I think that movie comes out in, like, less than a month now, I think early May, so I'm really excited for that. I'm actually working on another Detective Pikachu video uh, to hopefully come out before the movie does because I do want to do a review of the movie as well when I do get to see it. But for now, this guy's next Pokemon is going to be Gyarados. And by this guy, I mean Ryan Reynolds himself, of course. It's not like I totally forgot what his name was already. Hey, we're going to get a couple of levels there, though. I'm glad because I think Petrie is almost at 50 now. Not quite there, though, so I wonder if this Arcanine might be the one to push us to the edge. Maybe not, because it's not Petrie actually battling, but we need the Hydro Pump, okay? I'm not trying to risk Petrie going down, and I know one Rock Slide probably wouldn't have taken it down, so whatever, man. Arcanine goes down, and we'll see whatever the final Pokemon is, if Petrie can maybe handle it. Oh, it's Tauros. Probably not. I don't think actually most of our team can handle Tauros, judging by how the last battle against the Thor... Thoros went, not Thoros, of Mir. Thoros is actually a character, right? I think that's what I'm thinking of, but there he is. Hala's got a Hala, and Darwin is probably going to be our best bet against it, so let's go for a couple of double edges. Hey, a critical hit too. Good stuff, Darwin. Okay, maybe not so good because that's a lot of recoil we took there, and the Thrash is not quite going to get us, so the final double edge to end all be all something about all i really wonder if i'm like this all the time like so rambly and scatterbrained probably just the fact that this has been quite a long episode but finally we beat the coach trainer and we can move on to the pokemon league aha that was fun here this will come in handy and there it is the most outrageous tm of all time it can be used to teach your Pokemon the move Outrage. You know what they say about cheerful folks like me? You don't want to get us too angry. Very true, man. Those are the scariest people. Like, if you ever meet someone that seems too nice, that just means you don't want to mess with them or piss them off because they've probably got some dark stuff hidden inside that you do not want to bring out. But speaking of out, it sounds like we're finally out and on Route 23 once again, which means the Pokemon League is just a few steps away, and I can't believe it, but here we are at last. We've made it to the Indigo Plateau. Oh man, it looks so crazy in this game. 
Like, you can actually get a sense of how big it is as we gaze up at the Pokemon League with Darwin. This is bringing back so many memories, dude. <laughs> Playing Pokemon Fire Red, not being able to beat Lance forever, but Darwin, I'm counting on you. is our final challenge so let's go up the final steps here the indigo plateau hey there's the nameplate officially and as we head through these doors we'll see what the pokemon league looks like in all of its graphic glory <laughs> let's talk to the champ in the making man one last time at the pokemon league you will face the elite four all in a row if you lose you have to start all over again this is it go for it this is it guys, in the next episode we will take on the Pokemon League, the final challenge of Kanto. Or actually do a little bit of preparation for it because I don't think our team is quite ready and there's a couple of things I want to wrap up in Kanto before we take on that final challenge. So stay tuned and I will catch you all in the next one.